Okay, so I'm gonna pop this speedometer out of here, non-functioning speedometer. And again, without that functioning on this 1999 Sportsman 500, the all-wheel drive doesn't work, as I've talked about a bit in previous videos. I've already taken all the plastics off of this. Uh, again, also in a previous video, if you're curious about that, um, you can check that out. And to, so you're gonna see, <laughs> it's a pretty naked machine at this point. You know, you got, boom, no plastics. So anyways, uh, this is kind of a clamshell, this whole deal. And to take it apart, there are three screws on the back side. One, two, three. And then on the front side, you got two coming from the bottom. One, one on this side and one on this side. Then the whole thing kind of splits apart like a clamshell. And then, I'm gonna pop this on a tripod real quick, but after I show you. Um, if you look at, here, at the speedometer itself, there is a bunch of other wires under here, all of which you don't need to mess with. The speedometer itself, at least at this point, the speedometer itself, if you can see, there are two nuts, whoops, one here and one here that you would remove and it loosens the whole deal up. Then you got this wiring harness plugged in there and this one plugged in there. I think this one might be part of the all wheel drive, but I'm gonna sort that out. Hopefully clarify that a little better then that speedometer will pop right out of there. So again, we got one plug here. Try to wrestle that out of there. Sometimes they're a bit stiff when they're this old and been on there that long. And I'm not left-handed, so I should probably switch hands here and try to get that appropriately. That one's off. And that was right there. So there's really, they're two different sizes. You can't mix them up. Um, if I take any other wires up, and the second one off. So now, that's really not held in by anything but these two washer, I've, and I've already loosened them, that's why it's wiggling so sloppy. So I'm gonna take those off. A little spider web action. Dropped that one, but I will find it. I don't wanna lose all these little washers. Just hard to dig everything out from there if you, if you drop it. I'm trying not to do that. There and there. And now I should be able to just pop pull that thing through from the top. Let's see, Boop. there it is, free, free. Any. So my next move is going to be to take this thing apart. I'm probably going to take it in and sit down at kitchen table or something and and see what I can do about getting it apart. And again, the goal for me is to see if I can replace some burned out diodes and stuff in there. Um, see any evidence of something burning out because as I mentioned before it's very common for these to fry out from a couple of different ways one being uh, some poorly regulated voltage to it either too much not enough bad battery very common cause I'm told uh, frying these out and then pressure washing your machine and getting things all wet in there owner's manual has a very specific caution warning note about pressure washing in the the area of this and you know getting stuff wet and frying it out so we'll see um, see if we can take it apart now all right so I've taken the speedometer all apart and I think I found the culprit with mine first of all I just got to say taking this thing apart can be very delicate and I learned how to do so from there's many videos out there and in fact there's one guy has a really good blog and I, I apologize I don't know but if you Google my 1999 Sportsman 500 speedometer is broken or doesn't work or whatever. You're going to find there's one guy on there as a blog and he describes in great detail how to take it apart. And it, it was very helpful. Um, I'll kind of demonstrate some of that. You know, the very first thing being getting this ring off here. You know, you got your face in there, obviously. I just kind of turned it upside down, put a, a bladed screwdriver, and just kind of worked this edge all the way around because it's soft aluminum. Just kind of worked it all the way around until I was able to then, boop, pop that off. Then once that ring is off, I was able to then pry this off. Got a couple of moisture collectors in there that I'm thinking probably didn't do their job. And then you're left with this in there uh, with your uh, 
you know, your components circuit board underneath. If you are able to get a small tool in here and pry this up just a little bit, underneath you will see, then see there's a screw. And then about 10 miles per hour, pry that up a little bit, you'll see a Phillips screw again. And then at 40 miles an hour, pry it up a little bit, you'll see a Phillips screw in there again. Then this whole deal comes out. This with the circuit board connected to it. And you can put all this stuff aside. Um, the most delicate part that I'm led to believe if you fail at or if the equipment fails you is to remove your, your needle. Um, if that breaks, I guess you're kind of screwed and there's not much you can do about it and you just might as well replace the whole speedometer. Um, I took, I just took a piece of paper, put a tear in it, slid it down there and took two bladed screwdrivers and kept working this off until it came off. Now apparently there's a concern about what position it was in when it came off. I gotta be honest, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna take a shot at that. <laughs> and if, and if that needle isn't giving me accurate uh, readings, at least I'm still going to probably have my, uh, you know, my tripometer mileage. And most importantly, the whole motivation for this for me is to restore the four wheel drive. So after I got that off, then I pop, uh, flip this over again with this all still connected. Let's see how that goes. It was like this. There's four little black Phillips screws, one, two, three, four, and then this disconnects. And again, that needle's gotta be off first for this to come off. And if you break your needle, you might as well just quit is what I'm led to believe. So once I got that off, you know, this fell off. This goes right here. That's your digital display. That fell off. It's just not really even attached. So be aware of, be aware of the orientation of that when you, when, if, that comes off and before that comes off be aware of that because that just works through contact through here I think it's called a zebra strip if I'm not mistaken and another guy had suggested cleaning that with denatured alcohol to make the contacts better um, all right so that's all apart so then I started looking at pictures of uh, repairs that other people have online and I kept looking at it and looking at it and I mine looks slightly different I wonder what's up with that you know and then I looked on the table here and I found this just laying there this is what's referred to as a transistor TIP 48 every not every but the majority probably 90% <laughs> of stuff that I found online regarding this refers to this particular transistor and then potentially two other parts. Um, mine was no longer even connected. It was just laying there. So there appears to be an issue with history with these overheating, soldering, solders fail. Apparently there's two versions of this. Uh, one that they call a pin through mount. I guess, you know, the pins go through and it's soldered and in there. And then one where they call a surface mount, which I can only guess is it's just making contact with the surface and soldered. Well, either way, mine has clearly failed. So I'm going to see what I can do about, I'm not savvy enough to even know where to begin, how to test this transistor to see if it's still any good. I can't imagine it's that expensive of a part. I'm going to try to get my hands on another one. I got a neighbor who feels confident with their soldering skills. I do not, nor do I have the proper equipment. Some people have really warned about the delicate nature of the soldering of this. And I'd rather have it done right by somebody who's got some confidence in the proper tools. I've also seen guys where they said they just took a standard soldering iron and they clipped off all three pins to remove this because they needed to in their scenario and then addressed each individual hole to remove the old solder and then replace with a new transistor. But we'll see, I'm gonna cross my fingers. You know, that's the first hurdle to overcome is getting that back in there or maybe for you to replace it. Um, and then the second hurdle is to get it all back together properly, cross my fingers and test it. I'm also gonna clean up this plastic while I got it apart. I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty filthy. I'll see if I can po polish that up, uh, make it so you can see through it again, inside and out. 
and then uh, make sure I get the pin aligned properly. I'm kind of skeptical about that. But again, I don't, I'm not worried about that. As long as I can still get hours, tripometer, and most importantly, even if that stuff doesn't work, the all-wheel drive. Um, so as I said, this is a well-documented problem. I called Polaris and said, hey, have you guys, has there been a revised speedometer? Because this seems like a really common problem when I look it up. It looks like just about... I would imagine almost every 1999, and I don't know what other years have the same configuration, but it looks like just about every one of these has a speedometer problem then taking out their all-wheel drive. And she said, well, there is a, there's a, there was a second one, and she gave me the part number, and unfortunately, I can't see any part numbers on these stickers anymore. You know, they're wrinkly and numbers are long gone. She said the upgraded number or the second version of this was part number 32808363. So if you have that one and yours has failed, whatever, if you buy a new one, you're probably going to get that same one. So I've seen these on eBay in the in the close to 200 and then brand new on Amazon at I think 335. So to me it's worth going through this and trying to make it work. And it sounds like a lot of people have had success with it. You know, usually when people are sharing stuff online, they're, it's gonna be much more common to be motivated to share the success stories than the failures. So really can't see, say what percentage of those successes are uh, compared to failures. But again, it, it's worth trying. It really wasn't too hard. and. As I showed you in the previous part of the video, taking the speedometer itself out is a piece of cake. It's two bolts on the back, two wiring harnesses, and you're free. So just got to be really careful taking it apart. So I'm going to see about getting the solder, get another part in it, and I'll continue the video, hopefully, with success, but we shall see. <laughs> Even if it fails, I'm going to show you that too, because I think that needs to happen. So see you here in a on my next uh, part of this. All right, so I got one of my neighbors who's got uh, experience with uh, electrical components and soldering and all that stuff. He was able to reattach that tip 48. That's as far as I'm going to go on this, on this uh, attempt. <laughs> Hopefully it's successful, but again, that mine was out. And that being one of the most commonly problematic issues with these things is that either coming out or frying. Um, he did do a test on it and indicated that everything indicated it seemed to be a functioning transistor. So we soldered it back in, or he did. I don't want to take any credit for that because that was all him. Um, you can't even tell. It's actually these solders right here, but he did such a good job and cleaned it up real good. And so if it doesn't work, I don't feel like it's because anything he did. It's just there's other issues with it. Um, one thing that may be a problem I noticed, you know, when I was just flipping around, the LCD just kind of falls off. And this little piece was uh, under one side or the other. I believe the left side. Um, and then, you know, that, let's see here, kind of just sets on there. So be careful when you take that apart. Be very aware of how that is oriented. Set that on there, I believe. And then that just kind of sets in these holes here. Whoops, lost it. Anyways, I'll get that how it's supposed to be in theory. And then if the LCD does not work, it's either fried or I'll try, you know, to revisit that. But uh, my primary goal here is to uh, get the four wheel drive working again. And if all this other stuff works, bonus. Um, but if this thing lights up, then I'm going to jack up the machine and put it uh, put it in all-wheel drive and see if all four, four tires spin. And if those all work, then I'll put you know the cover back on and 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 the bezel as well um, and put it together as finalized. You know, and the, and the needle and the the reset button and all that. But the uh, main thing is I want to get it together enough just to test it and then I'll seal it all back up. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll pop it back in and I'll show you the results of that, whether it works or not. All right, just a quick note. I have discovered how the orient proper orientation for this, for your LCD. You have 
this can this kind of sets into both sides of that your LCD then sits on top this little guy here that is where your reset button for your tripometer is at or if you're toggling through kilometers versus miles you know that kind of deal so that is pushing on that spot this should be under there kind of domed up so it would give kind of a springing effect as you press on your on your button it would just kind of spread out and push back on this um, so that's how that's supposed to go in there you know and I found that if I put it in here if I put it in here first you'll kind of find a way that it'll orient and then I turn this upside down I can kind of get that in there a little more successfully there we go it's in there now and now if I were to try to test my little button on that see I hear a clicking and I feel a little spring to it so that's how that goes so that answers my question I was concerned about that so now I'll get it all back together and then we're going to test it all right so I've reconnected the wires to the back of this I did not put the needle back on the speedometer and I did not screw the the speedometer back into the case it's just pressed in there the pins go through the back and it holds it pretty firmly in place and then I put the connectors back on so I'm going to turn on my key and put it in uh, you know the kill switch in the proper position and we'll see if the lights even come on that'll be a good indicator because it did not do that before they would not come on so I'll uh, turn it on my key putting on the, the switch into the look at that that's fantastic so and then also my LCD is working I don't know if anything it's saying is <laughs> accurate but uh, you know that's working so there's that and then now I'll uh, I'm gonna start it up so you won't be able to hear me I'm gonna start it up and see if we can make the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive work that would be fantastic because uh, that was not working and that was the main uh, objective here so start this up both spinning well all four are spinning that's I call that mission accomplished for now I mean I don't know that other issues aren't going to arise with the speedometer but I'm up and running now with all-wheel drive and the speedometer again um, the LCD is working I'm assuming the speedometer will work as well I won't know until I pop the needle back on and something I read in somebody else's uh, blog about that and many many threads out there about this this is a very common problem not necessarily that the transistor falls out like mine did but it's a very common problem for these speedometers to fail and have you know related issues to that transistor and, and possibly two others in there but I think I was fortunate to open up my speedometer and find you know successfully without <laughs> breaking it first of all that's the first hurdle you got to get past and then once you do that, I was, I was fortunate to find that transistor just laying in there and then be able to reattach it and have the outcome that you're now seeing. So, so we'll, uh, we'll see how long it lasts, if it rears its head again. Um, and if it does, I still have the option of either getting another speedometer or bypassing that just to make the all-wheel drive work, but we'll see. I prefer not to do the bypass option, but you know, if, if I'm you know, somewhere where Doing all this kind of work is not as convenient. I may just do that, but we'll see. Cross that bridge when I come to it. Anyways, there you go. I hope that helps some people out. I know it's not gonna be the exact scenario for everybody, but it'll at least hopefully get you through, um, you, know, you know, troubleshooting it a little bit anyways. I, my intention now is, because I, on one of the uh, threads I was reading, it, it said to be aware of the orientation of the needle when you pull it off. 
and I'm not 100% sure positionally where that was. So once I get that, I mean, I have a rough idea. I think it was right around the 10, 10 miles an hour uh, point when I plucked it off there, but I won't swear to it. So my intention is to put that needle on partially um, and try to drive it and then watch it go up and down and see where it settles at the zero point and then try to fine tune it so it settles on the zero before pressing it on all the way because getting that thing off was is a very delicate uh, good potential for breaking it and if you do you're done um, and you know it, it, I'll get it close you know like I said and kind of try to zero it out and hopefully that, that all works out but uh, you know maybe I'll show that in the end here too um, so if I have babbled enough and hopefully given you some guidance great if I amend this, there might be another part on here about me uh, addressing the needle. But I think I'm good. I'm really happy with that. We'll see how long it lasts, and hopefully you have the same kind of luck. See you on the next one.